Well, this is a real exciting time, the 35th anniversary of the F-18. The F-18, of course, today is, is the cornerstone of naval aviation. It is the preponderance of the tactical uh, air forces that we have. For the Navy, we have seven squadrons on an aircraft carrier, and five of those are from, uh, from this type model series. Uh, four F-18 Hornet squadrons, whether they're classic Hornets or Super Hornets, uh, and then the Growler squadrons that transitions uh, into the fleet. For the Marine Corps, it's the preponderance of the tactical aviation force uh, alongside the Harrier. So, uh, so the, the F-18 is, uh, is, is the backbone of uh, naval aviation. When I think back of the history of F-18 and, and what it's uh, meant for the country, in, in a lot of ways, uh, really been there and, and saved uh, naval aviation, at least the tactical naval aviation force, uh, on a couple of occasions. Uh, one, uh, in its inception back in uh, the 80s, uh, we needed uh, airframes to replace our aging uh, Vietnam era uh, aircraft. Uh, the F-14 was just entering service, but we weren't going to be able to buy that in the numbers that we required to fill our carrier decks. Uh, the Marine Corps was in a similar situation with their aging uh, Vietnam era airframes. And so uh, after the Air Force's lightweight fighter competition and determination that the F-16 wasn't going to be suitable uh, for, uh, for a carrier environment, uh, along came the F-18. And the F-18 came into development and really saved naval aviation, both on the Navy and the Marine Corps side, and our ability to fill our squadrons, to fill our flight decks, and to fill our uh, Marine air groups uh, so we could continue to, uh, to perform that mission. Uh, second time was in the mid-90s. Again, we had aging airframes, and we needed to replace um, our, uh, we needed to replace our uh, squadrons and aircraft on our flight decks. Uh, and we were left, A-12 was canceled very late in the program. Uh, and so the Super Hornet uh, concept uh, came about, and the Super Hornet was uh, rapidly developed uh, with uh, very uh, few issues that came along, and we were able to get that airplane into the fleet when we needed in order to maintain squadrons and force structure uh, for the Navy. As I think about today, I, I see um, uh, F-18 doing a, a similar role uh, for naval aviation. And as we continue to advance Super Hornet uh, along, because uh, it's, it's always been in the plan to be there for uh, many decades uh, to come, uh, and we increase that capability to face the threat of today and the high-end threat of the future. Uh, again, um, Super Hornet, Hornet is there. And that doesn't even mention the Growler, which, uh, of course, is uh, now replacing the Prowler uh, very smoothly and is going to be there uh, for decades to come, uh, providing uh, the nation's uh, really uh, only and certainly foremost airborne electronic attack. With the oncoming of uh, computer technology and advanced avionics and digital flight controls and mission computers, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing how uh, this airplane continues to evolve. Uh, first and foremost, I think one of the great stories and one of the great lessons learned of, uh, of the F-18 has been its evolutionary approach to development. Uh, throughout its history, we've taken uh, controlled capability advancement steps uh, that allowed us to control schedule and control risk and deliver the capability on time and on cost. And that has uh, served the Navy extremely well and the Marine Corps and our seven uh, foreign partners as well as we continue to advance this airplane steadily. For myself personally and for uh, countless other Hornet pilots and career Hornet pilots across the Navy and Marine Corps, uh, you just grow a kinship for an airplane. It's your office, it's your home, you become very comfortable, it protects you, it allows you to do what mission you're called upon, and so, uh, so there's always a kinship uh, with whatever airplane that you may be um, associated with. For the F-18, though, uh, I marvel and I think about uh, how much it's done for this country, for the Navy, for the Marine Corps, how far it's advanced. It's a strike fighter, true and true, both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground, full capability. It carries every weapon system that, uh, that the Navy and Marine Corps basically has to put on an airplane. Uh, it's a tanker in the Super Hornet role to be able to uh, provide fuel to uh, other Hornets or other aircraft out there. And now it's an electronic uh, attack variant uh, airplane as well in the Growler. So uh, I can't think, and I'm someone who certainly has followed aviation my entire life, of a, of a more versatile airplane that has uh, provided so much uh, for, for its country and for its service. Today, we sit here 35 years after its uh, inception, and we have three variants, all of which are flying, 
the classic F-18 across the Navy, Marine Corps, and seven foreign partners uh, across, uh, across the world. We have the Super Hornet uh, that's flying across the Navy and will be for decades to come, as well as with our partner Australia. And we have the Growler, a third variant now, uh, flying uh, across the Navy uh, flight decks uh, in expeditionary roles uh, and shortly uh, with, uh, with the Australians as well. So uh, very exciting, very exciting time.